Welcome back to Talking Dragon Age, the show where I talk about Dragon Age. This episode is all about the Shabratal. We only encounter them inside the Titan in the The Descent DLC. And multiplayer, I guess, but I don't think that counts. So, let's get started here with the Shabratal Codex entry. There's a lot of information here, and it's all freaking awesome, so I'm going to take this just a little at a time. Ren's murderers hide in the shadows, watching me from a safe distance. The Shabratal saw the Titan favor me with the gift of Shaping Stone. I am more powerful than they will ever be. They fear me. They love me. They understand I am a part of the Titan they defend, but they don't realize it doesn't need their protection. It never has. Whoever these dwarves once were, whatever motives drove them to remain here, now they are only lost. So the Shabratal worship the Titan. The Inquisitor makes a comment about them being their equivalent to the Legion of the Dead. Valta just kind of shrugs that off, but I have to wonder how accurate a description that actually is. I'm thinking, when the Titans fell, the Dwarves splintered into two main groups. The first are the Dwarves of the Deep Roads, which we've dealt with up until this point. The second are the Dwarves of the Titans, where the Shabratal come from. I'll come back to that. I don't sleep anymore, but sometimes I stop to listen. Yesterday, or was it an hour ago, I became aware of a Shabratal who crept close enough to leave an offering, an empty suit of their armor. Did they think I would wear it? Lead them? All their gift did was summon the image of my dead friend as I returned him to the stone. I left the armor where it lay. The Shabratal understand that Valta is now a part of the Titan, but they don't understand how. If they didn't realize the Titan didn't need their protection, I don't think they really understand the Titan at all. They're just a remnant of their ancient ancestors, from before the Titans fell. They remind me of the Dalish, in a way. The main difference being that they aren't seeking out their history, they think they already know it all. Tomorrow, no, it was just a moment ago, I enter one of their towers. I sense how rapidly they flee my approach. They think I come to destroy them, but I don't have to get close to do that. I'm just curious to see how they live. Do they live? The tower offers no answers. It is quiet and spare, reminding me of the descriptions of Topsiders' temples to their gods. Are the towers temples? Fortresses? Both, perhaps. Only one chamber provided anything of interest to me. A domed circular courtyard held a pool of the titan's blood at its center. Empty suits of armor sat neatly in a circle around the pool. Is this where the Shabratal come to be entombed in their metal skins? Okay, this sounds awesome. I'm sincerely disappointed we didn't actually get to see this room. Illyrium baptism? That's badass! <laughs> what smith makes this armor, and where does it come from? My lost kin are hiding something. They have a tyke somewhere. I have no interest in finding the citadel of the Shabratal, but another might. Okay, so they're clearly just teasing us with that last bit, but I really love the way they wrote that. My lost kin are hiding something. They have a tag somewhere. Awesome. Anyway, this does bring up an interesting question. How do they keep their numbers up? I don't think they can really procreate with that armor on. Unless they have children before they entomb themselves, but... No, that doesn't sound right. If they have a tag somewhere, where non-combatant dwarves live, that would explain things. The question is, are these dwarves just like normal people, just with different beliefs? Or are they more like a fanatical cult? I don't have an answer. It's like trying to judge Orzammar just based on the Silent Sisters. Now, another question is how many dwarves there actually are. The Shabratal had an obnoxious amount of fighters and are implied to still have a lot after the descent is over. Do they have more than one Taig? I mean, I'm guessing they're defending more than just this one Titan. Do they all lead back to a single central location? I'm inclined to think so. But this brings up another interesting idea. Remember how I said the dwarves splintered into two groups after the titans fell? Well, let's take a look at when we first enter the wellspring. Did the Shabratal build all this? Or was it here before them? I could totally believe that these structures predate the fall of the titans, and that would imply that their citadel would be of the same origin, built to house the dwarves before the fall and the Shabratal and their ilk are what remains of the ancient dwarves, while the ones of the Deep Roads developed along a new path. So I think I'm about ready to wrap this up. This episode is way shorter than I expected. So let's recap. The Shabratal have a whole society somewhere, and are probably remnants of a time just after the Titans fell. They worship and defend the Titans to the death, although the Titans don't actually need to be protected. They ritualistically entomb their bodies by putting on armor, which is then sealed in Illyrium Baptism. 
Come to think of it, how do they eat? Maybe they don't have to anymore? And there's a reference to Titan's blood? It says the Shabratal come here to drink it. The Titan's blood must keep the Shabratal alive and powerful. Huh. Anyway, the aforementioned society could be full of dwarves completely fanatical in their belief, or they could be just like any other random society. In any event, I will be severely disappointed if we never see it. It would be intriguing to see what the dwarves of Orzammar and Kal Shorak will think of it. One last thing I want to mention is their weaponry. This is almost steampunk tech. If this is an indicator of the rest of their technology, just imagine what their tie looks like. So I guess that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and remember... La Nadas.